Hey, what's up, everybody? I know it's been a long time. Um, before I get into it, I just wanted to show you what we're going to be doing. And it's showing you how to create scenes, um, a scene selector, so you can just use a smart bone to, um, let me grab this, and just switch scenes really easy by turning this bone. Um, this is a lot easier to do in Moho 12 and 13, but I wanted to show you guys how to create the smart bone in case you're using versions uh, 9, 10, or 11 um, for you guys that are using older um, versions. So, um, I'm going to start from the very beginning. And again, I apologize for being gone so long. I was uh, very busy. Uh, in September, I was working um, every day um, 70... Uh, 60 to 70 hours a week. I was working two jobs and um, in October, I finally got a job as an animator full-time though, but still working lots of hours. But I want to make videos for you guys, so um, I have time today and I'm going to show you starting from scratch on making scenes. So we'll go to, um, I'm just starting in a new uh, project file. We'll go to import. We're going to go ahead and use just some of the scenes that come with the program. And this is appropriate because it's almost Halloween. So we'll go to the Smith Micro Holiday Halloween and we'll import the Witch House. And actually, before we do that, let me let me um, go ahead and create a new group folder. And we'll just name this scene one. And I'll go ahead and duplicate it a few times and it'll automatically number them. So we'll have like four scenes. And let me get rid of this default layer. I'll drag the witch's house into scene one. And let me go ahead and rearrange these so it's numbered from top to bottom. Scene one, scene two, scene three, and scene four. So the reason I'm, even though the witch's house is a bone group and technically already in a group, I like to put them in folders just because if we're going to import anything else, so let's say we import um, another character like the wolf, I can import that and put that into my first scene. And so like it's in the foreground, but it's, it's still, it's, it's in its own group as well, but it's still in the first scene. So it's just good to keep these things organized by keeping them in folders. So we'll keep all that in scene one. We'll go ahead and import another scene. And we'll go to Halloween, the werewolf house. And this time we'll just import the house itself and hit OK. And I'll drag that into the second scene folder and collapse that. And then we'll go ahead and go and import uh third scene let's go ahead and grab the vampire house or the castle and hit okay put that in the third scene and then let's do one more import custom scene holiday let's do inside the va vampire's house and again, this is another reason why you should always make folders because we have all these different effects and all these other different parts. We'll go ahead and check them all. Hit OK. I'll hold Shift down. Select all of that stuff I just imported. Drag and drop that into scene four. And... Uh, so we have our four scenes. So in Moho 12 and 13, it's super easy because you can just go to um, create a switch layer and call this scene switcher or whatever you want to call it and hit OK. And I'll put this on top. I'll grab all of these scenes we've made and drag it in there. And now if I'm in the scene switcher layer or group, I can just go to window and switch selection. And then that way I can just actually just pick whichever scene I want. So I can be in the timeline. Those kids are at the castle. And then I can switch it over to inside. Uh, where is it? Inside uh, 
Dracula's castle, goes and answers the door, then I can switch back over to the outside to the kids. So that's really super easy. And it's hiding all the other layers we don't need, which is great. But if you're using an older version of Moho or Anime Studio, um, you'll need to make a smart bone. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. We'll go ahead and grab all of our scenes. Let's drag them out of the switch layer. And you can, you can use the switch layer. You don't need to have the switch selection viewport. Um, you can just have a switch layer in older versions, but I find this way to be a little easier. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And I'm just going to make a bone layer. So I'll create a bone layer and I'll call this switch uh, selector or scene selector. Selector, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and hit OK. I'll go ahead and do the same kind of thing. I'm just going to drag all of those scenes into the bone layer, holding shift down, selecting them all, dragging them up. Then I'll select the bone layer. I'll go ahead and hit A to add bone. And we're going to create a smart bone over here on the side. I'll go ahead and select the bone strength and turn that down because we don't need that for anything. And I'll go ahead and hit B. We'll name this bone scene selector. And let's go ahead and label it. And I'm just going to color it yellow just so it sticks out or stands out. So we have a scene selector bone. So all we need to do now is make a, a smart bone action. So I'm going to go to window and uh, actions and then make sure you're on frame zero and also make sure that you have the bone layer selected and the bone highlighted in red so with the action window open you just hit new action and it should turn blue down here on the timeline and then you just need to validate the name of the bone so hit return uh, that's just it's kind of just yeah asking you to make sure that this is named the same so we're on frame one in our actions so what we need to do now is double click scene two because we basically we just want to hide the other layers so uncheck visible and hit apply and you can actually do this for three and four just be careful when you're doing a lot of um, assigning visible or unvisible or visible or invisible to a lot of layers at the same time because it can crash your uh, program if you do too many. But you can select one, hold shift, select the second one, and then uncheck visible and apply and hit OK. So basically what we've done on frame one is hide all of the scenes except scene one. Then we're going to go to frame two. So you can hit your right arrow key or you can drag it over to frame two and you can see it right here. Um, and we'll do the same thing with we'll double click scene one. Let's hide it this time. Uncheck visible, apply, and then go ahead and select scene two and check visible and apply. So frame two, we can see scene two. And we'll go over one more. This time I'll drag it over to three and you can see it's on frame three right here. Uncheck scene two and then Select scene three and make that one visible and hit OK. And we'll go over one more time to frame four. Make sure you're on frame four right here. And then uncheck visible for scene three, apply that, and then scene four, make that visible and apply. And then hit OK. So now if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that we have our scenes appearing and disappearing. And now we just need to go to the last frame, scene four, or frame four, and make sure you select the bone layer, and then hit T, and then click in the center of the bone, and then ro rotate it. You can rotate it left or right. Um, I'm just going to rotate it 45 degrees to the right. So now when that bone rotates, it's going to change the scenes, like that. And then we'll go back into our timeline. Now there's one more thing that you have to, to do to make this work correctly because if I go to frame one and I hit T or Z and start rotating this bone, 
Um, let's say I have scene one right here with the outside with the wolf, but then I want it to switch directly to inside the vampire's house. So if I go forward and rotate this to that, um, it's not going to work correctly because it's going to show scene two and three in between because it's rotating. So it actually will show you more than you wanted. So what you need to do is let's delete that. Go to frame one on your first scene and right click on the rotation button and select step. And what that does is it's going to make it just snap to whatever you choose next. So now if I go in the time frame or timeline and rotate this to inside his house, it just snaps. But you also need to be sure that you click on this button right here and say copy previous key. That way you don't have to right click and set every keyframe to step. It's just going to automatically do that. So if I go in the timeline and I switch back, you'll notice that the rotation keyframe is set to step already. So we can go to the kids outside the house. We can move back into the vampire house if we want. He answers the door, I can go back to outside the castle and then I can go forward and go back to frame or scene two if I want or one and they all just, just snap to what we want like that. So it's really really easy but it's very very helpful at least it is to me for production and keeping stuff organized. Also um, a lot of times if you're not you have a lot of scenes. Sometimes you might forget to turn one off or you have one hidden instead of it being actually um, visibility not turned off. So it's just, it's really nice. Um, it, it just keeps your scenes really organized. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Um, I also am going to just make a blank screen selector um, for you guys that you can download on my Gumroad store for free. It's not anything spectacular. It's just going to be a smart bone layer set up to switch between folders. But if you don't feel like making all the folders and stuff, I'll put like 10 scenes in there. Um, and you just can uh, import your own stuff. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to be making a lot more videos soon.